So what is a plan of reorganization in a Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy case? Well, generally the debtor in possession must propose a plan of reorganization within 120 days of filing of the relief for bankruptcy. Uh, now this can be extended and usually is uh, by the court for some cause or for some reason or justification. Uh, but the um, bankruptcy code provides some mandatory provisions that must be re um, covered in the bankruptcy plan and uh, there are lots of permissible provisions that generally are included in the bankruptcy plan. So once the bankruptcy plan is drafted then uh, the debtor in possession has to draft a notice of uh, the bankruptcy plan and this is basically like a disclosure statement in a securities filing. Okay, It includes all of this operational, structural, and financial information about the debtor. Okay, um, And this notice disclosure statement along with the plan uh, has to be submitted to the court for approval. Once reviewed by the court it has to be approved before being sent to creditors. Once the court approves it, it can be sent out to creditors for approval. All right. Now for a plan to be approved by creditors uh, there's a voting process, right? So uh, the uh, debtor in possession has to send a court approved ballot as well for voting uh, upon approval of the plan. Now <clears throat> secured creditors uh, paid under the plan, they don't get to vote. They're assumed to have accepted uh, the plan. And uh, unsecured creditors who are going to receive no dividend under the plan, no payment pursuant to the plan, are assumed to have rejected the plan. Okay, uh, So um, with that in mind, uh, then they submit the, um, submit the plan to unsecured creditors for vote. The requirement is that at least one class of unsecured impaired creditors have to vote to approve the plan. Okay, Have to vote to approve it. Um, and lots of times with fancy reorganization of the plan they can put a class of impaired uns uh, uh, unsecured creditors there, uh, a minor class that will approve the plan when many other classes reject it and this can this is called effectively a cram down when they're uh, forcing the plan down on a group of creditors who uh, otherwise would not approve or do not approve of the plan. So in the voting process, uh, they'll submit it to the classes of creditors. Two thirds of uh, total uh, claims against the state have to approve it, and within a within that impaired class, one half of the creditors, more than one half of the creditors in that impaired class, have to approve the plan. So once it goes through this process and you got your uh, at least one class of impaired creditors who uh, approve the plan, then it goes on and is submitted to the court for approval. And the court's going to look at a number of things uh, before it can approve the plan. First, it has to follow some basic rules that um, uh, the, that uh, secured creditors have to be paid in full. Uh, that um, that. Uh, the plan is in the best interest of creditors in general, so uh, creditors have to receive more under this plan than they would have received in Chapter 7 bankruptcy, Okay, uh, which is pretty easy generally because secured creditors are going to be paid in full. Unsecured creditors in Chapter 7 generally do not uh, receive much just because the fire sale or liquidation of assets generally doesn't produce a lot of revenue. The real value of a business is in its ongoing operations so, uh, or its ability to continue to bring in money. So anyway, it has to meet that breast interest test. The administrative priority given to uh, certain creditors has to come first and have to be paid on the date of approval of the plan. Uh, any regular priority creditors, again, have to be paid in full on the date of approval of the plan unless they themselves have agreed to or approved the plan uh, and then or will get paid on a, on a different date. Um, and then the court has to determine that the plan is feasible. Okay, uh, and they'll review another uh, a number of things to determine fe feasibility. Here are some of the factors: the earning power of the business, the adequacy of the capital structure, the economic and market conditions uh, existing for the business at the time, the ability and retention of management, and the ability to meet obligations as they become due. So they'll look at all of these factors in consideration of the plan, and if the other elements are present, the uh, voting presence, the uh, priority interest, uh, et cetera, and the best interest aspects, if all of these things are present, then the court can approve the plan. Uh, but it, uh, it retains a lot of authority and a lot of autonomy in reviewing the different elements of the plan to determine uh, whether it is truly feasible or not. If it is, the court will approve the plan and then um, 
uh, the debtor proceeds with uh, carrying out the plan over the stated period of time.